You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison. Welcome, listeners, to another episode of the SDSU Football Podcast. I am your host, Andre Hagverdian, and will be joined shortly by my co-host, Paul Garrison. Today's episode has a Texas theme to it. San Diego State has been a big proponent of recruiting and bringing in football players from the state of Texas. In this year's class of 2023, they have three players uh, from high school that will be coming to the Mesa from Texas. We had one of them on the podcast back in the summer in episode 27, Tyson Berry, who had committed to San Diego State at that time, obviously before making it official with the signing in December. The This episode, we have interviews with the other two of the three guys from Texas, Caleb Botluski and Briley Barron. We had a chance to catch up with both. Great interviews. I know you guys will enjoy both of them. Uh, so let's get right to it. Our first guest is Caleb Botluski, a 6'4", 225-pound linebacker from Melissa High School in Melissa, Texas. Caleb was the District 7 5A Defensive Player of the Year in the fall of 2022 after recording 137 tackles, 13 tackles for loss, five and a half sacks, 15 quarterback hurries, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, and one interception. And also he led Melissa to the quarterfinals of the state playoffs. In addition to being a great football player that was heavily recruited by Power 5 schools. He also held four scholarship offers in baseball. He is a two-sport star who will be playing football at San Diego State in the fall. We want to welcome Caleb Otluski to the SDSU Football Podcast. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing good. How are you guys? We're doing great, Great, man. Thank you. You're from Melissa, Texas. Uh, for those of us that are not that familiar with Texas, can you tell us what part of Texas that's from and whether you've lived there your whole life or you you came there from somewhere else? Melissa, Texas is uh, north, of te- north of Dallas. So it's, we call it like North Texas area. So I came here when I was so- in my sophomore year of high school. I moved from Ohio. Oh, wow. Family things going on. So I lived up in Ohio. I was born in Sherman, Texas, if you've heard of Sherman, Texas before. I was born in Sherman, Texas and moved up to Ohio when I was 10. And uh, at 10 years old, I moved back down. I mean, at 15 years old, I moved back down here sophomore year. And that's when the grind started, you know what I'm saying? So Early signing day, you signed to become a San Diego State Aztec. Can you take us through your recruiting process, how San Diego State fit in, what other schools you're talking to? And then ultimately why San Diego State was a choice? I came here to Melissa and my junior year was when I had my first offer to UTSA. And uh it was it's a good school, obviously. Yeah, you know, and then after that, after that season was over, I started getting more and more offers as it gone as it would go on. And then San Diego State comes in after during that junior year of baseball season. And I would go there for spring break, like spring practices and stuff like that. And I would practice. And I guess Coach Horton said he saw me with my shoulder pads off because I wasn't allowed to wear shoulder pads. But I would like to go in no matter what. And I would still lower my shoulder and everything and try to get and make plays. So Coach Horton said he loved me, loved everything he saw about me, said I was physical, even without shoulder pads. So that's a good thing. That's what I loved about Coach Horton, and it sucks that he's now retiring, but, you know, he's a good guy. I got to go down there and take a visit. I took my visit out there, and right when I I got off the plane, I was like, I've never been to California. I was like, I love it here. I love it here. I brought my little brother, my mom. My my little brother is like, I've never been to the beach. Got a five-year-old brother, so, I mean, he loves it there. My mom loves it there, and, I mean, that's a good little spot for me. I feel like I got to. 
want to get better, you know, improve. And I get a little bit of competition, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to enjoy when I'm out there. Well, tell us a little bit more about that visit, man. Uh, who was your player host and and what are some of the other highlights um, that, that you recall from that trip? So my player host was uh, Dom Oliver. He loves – he's a Christ follower, and I love that. I mean, my favorite – Versus Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Just just being there with him, he showed me a lot of, he showed me the campus. I got to hang out with, uh, at his dorm. It was nice. Like, I just love it. The campus is beautiful. The facilities is amazing. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he's going to, he's also a linebacker, defensive edge rusher like me. So I feel like we're, me and him are going to work together. He's going to help push me to reach my goals and I'm, I can help him. Reach his goals. You know what I'm saying. Campus is uh really good. It's really amazing. I feel like my education is going to get boosted when I get there as well. So can't wait to get on campus. Incredible, man. So the Aztecs they've had a lot of recent success, and we know Coach Horton's been a big part of that. But why do you think, other than you know just the the personality of Coach Horton, who he is, what is it about San Diego State and uh, that guys from Texas are finding so appealing? California has good competition. You know what I'm saying. You know, Texas, we also have really good competition, but I mean, the weather, you're out, you're always able to go out there and play football. The weather here, you can play football. I mean, it's like, it's kind of like you're not really leaving home, but you're leaving home, if you know what I'm saying. So to me, I don't really know why a lot of Texas people go out there to California to play football. I mean, this, for me, this is my first time going out. This will be my third time going out to California when I get next time I go out there. So, yeah, what do you get out there? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely no. We keep we keep asking everybody because we can't completely figure it out either. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. there's all everyone has all these different reasons, but San Diego State has kind of developed this pipeline with Texas, and it's just like, well, you know, what is that reason? Trying to trying to see if we can get to the bottom of it, man. But yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. an amazing thing. You have San Diego State. It's also growing. I mean, the football team. What I heard is going in the Pac-12. It doesn't matter, but if they go in the Pac-12, they're going to get more recruits you know bigger recruits if anything and you're going to get play against better competition which is going to push the school to get better so i mean i think recruits are going to like that which will draw more kids to california and to play football you're one of three guys from texas in this class um how familiar are you with tyson berry and briley Barron, who are also those other texas guys that are going to be coming over with you Tyson Berry, I know he goes to some school close, about probably four hours away from me. Uh, he's a really good kid, you know. I got to, like I made a group chat with us all SDSU commits, and you know we all get along on it. So can't wait to meet him. Don't really know much about him, but can't wait to meet him again. I mean Tyson Berry, I did see on my official visit, and he's a, he's a good kid. He's fast too, so. <laughs> You mentioned no, I, your I, I don't think that was a fair question, Andre. I don't think it was a fair question. And you answered Fine. it very, very well. You, you're going to ask the guy who's going to get to the quarterback to tell you about an offensive lineman. There's no chance. Those guys are going to be competing, you know, in practice for the next few years, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned your linebacker, edge rusher. For people that haven't seen you play, how would you describe your game? Uh, I would say that whatever the coach tells me to do, I'm gonna get, I'm, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? I love very to dipl- very diplomatic answer. <laughs> I mean, I love to I love to compete. So if I get knocked down, which I know it will happen, I'm gonna get back up. You know. So I mean, that's, how, that's what I've always it's always uh, sort of always been taught. I want to go to a school where everyone wants to compete, and I think San Diego State's got that compete in it. So uh, I know I want to be a leader. You know, I want to be a leader. I don't want to. I don't want to be a follower. I want to leave a mark in Melissa like I'm leaving a mark in Melissa because that's my goal. And I also want to go to San Diego State and leave a mark in San Diego State. I mean, I hope that tells you how of an athlete I want to be or how I play. You were the 7-5A Division II District Defensive Player of the Year. What did that honor mean to you? It meant a lot because I've been working. I've been working pretty hard the off season also playing baseball and, you know, going into my college year next year, you know, I got a lot, a lot, a lot of work to work on. So 
it just it feels like it feels a relief. I mean, yeah, we got that, but you know, we gotta keep working. We got we got more goals to reach. You know, it's it's not gonna come easy waking up at five o'clock in the morning to go to bit to football practice in the mornings. You know, so hard work don't come easy. So just tells me like, yeah, we got you got it, but we got more stuff to reach. So I feel you mentioned that San Diego State has a real competitive edge. How does that come across in the recruiting process as something that stands out? Because I got to imagine that every coach is telling you, you know, come over to here, compete, compete. But what was it about maybe San Diego State that that made that stand out for them just a little bit more? I would say when I went down to San Diego State, I got to sit in Coach Maddox's room and he talked to me about, gave me a little, a little good talk. You know, he's like, we don't, we don't BS here is what he was telling me. We don't play around, you know. Every day you come here, it's going to be work, 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 you know. So, I mean, yeah, other colleges, it's basically the best kids in their high school going up to the to school, and they're going to be grinding it out. Right. You get that starting spot. So, at San Diego State, I saw all the kids out there, and they're also, like, you could tell how connected everyone was and how even just walking around campus, the students walking around, they were connected as well. It's, it was crazy to me. So, I think that that'll bring the competition. I just saw competition in that. So I, that's what I love about San Diego State and their competition. I just, I think it's a pretty remarkable thing because I, I think we have, uh, you know, we've spoken to a lot of players this year, last year who are, who are young guys and that honesty, that, that straight up approach, like, listen, it's a lot of work. This is what we do. A lot of people have found that refreshing. And, and, and so it's interesting to see that connected with uh, competition. Um, so then what is it that you're doing, you know, between now and what you're focused on to, to hit the ground running um, when you get on campus? You know, I'm focusing on really getting faster. I got the workout sent to me by Coach Maddox. And, uh, you know, they run a lot. But that's 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 good because up in college, the D1 level, it's it's fast. It's quick. Everything's going to be quick. I mean, I weigh 227 right now. And I boosted at the beginning of the season. I was doing 20, 215. So I'm trying to get bigger and get faster at the same time. My goal is to just outwork the person in front of me. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, when you're, when I'm up there working in the gym, are you working or are you sleeping? You know what I'm saying? That's my goal. And I bet there's a lot of people's New Year's resolutions too is getting the weight room because I haven't seen that many people in the at the gym at Club Four recently. So. <laughs> a lot of people there. <laughs> the Essex are known for their three three five defense. Um, you know, over the years, man, their front six has just been one of the best in the country. Uh, but they're losing a lot of starters. Mm-hmm. And what has Coach Maddox told you, a different coaching staff, about just you know your opportunity to potentially play early? Well, like I told you, when I came in the came in that room and talked to Coach Maddox, he told me that it's not it's not going to come easy. It's, I mean, it's. I'm not just going to tell you, Caleb, here, here's a spot on the lineup. I want you to, he's like, I want you to come here and work for it. You got to come here and work for it, which that's when I saw, I was like, well, man, you got to compete here. I got to come here and compete. I got to come here and compete against all the other kids that wake up early, make sure I'm on time, make sure I'm eating right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what, I mean, he didn't really tell me, hey, Caleb, you can come over here and, you're going to redshirt or, hey, Caleb, you're going to come in here and be a true freshman, you know. Mm-hmm. It's uh, more of a, hey, Caleb, you come here. If you work your butt off, you might have a chance to play. You know, everything, nothing's free. Nothing's, if it's just handed to you, why would I, you know, why would I want to come here? Do you have a date yet on when you're uh, coming to campus? I'll be coming uh, June 7th. I graduate May 26th, so. Get to get on campus June seventh, and then in terms of you know, Coach Maddox always talks about how the three best linebackers are going to play, and he's not too concerned necessarily about who's playing outside and inside. But do you is that something that have you pretty much played as an outside linebacker most of your high school career? Have you played inside? Yes, sir. So I played inside my uh, freshman and sophomore year, and then a ju- one of my junior year in playoffs, one of our uh, Linebackers got hurt, so I had to play inside backer. I was starting outside backer that whole year, and then 
one week during playoffs, uh, one of the linebackers got hurt. So I had to go and just fill in a linebacker and I did pretty good. So, you know, like I said, I'm going to just do whatever, do whatever needed to win the game. So. You mentioned earlier baseball. So you, you also played baseball. Your Twitter bio says third base and relief pitcher. Uh, is What kind of baseball player are you? And did you get any recruiting looks uh, to play baseball? Yeah, so uh, I actually have uh, four offers to play Division One baseball, like ACCs. Some schools are offering me to walk on, like if I want to go there and play football, I can walk on. I top on, topped on the mound 93. Wow. So, I mean, hopefully – try to just walk on and play baseball at San Diego State, see how that goes maybe. And then baseball is my mom's favorite sport. If I were to be honest with you, I didn't think I'd grow up and say, hey, I'm going to San Diego State to play football. I would think, hey, I'm going to San Diego State to play some baseball because I grew up playing baseball. That was my sport. After my junior year, I was like, dang, yeah, I love football. Football is so fun. I'm enjoying this. I get to take some quarterbacks' heads off <laughs> and, and then flex after or do whatever after. but. My mom's favorite sport is baseball, so she I promised her that senior year I'd play baseball. It was it's hard to let baseball go. Like it was it was hard to tell recruiters, man. I'm sorry, I just football over baseball. It was hard, but I got to do what I love and what I'm enjoying right now, and what I think is going to better me in the future. I'm going to play baseball. I'm going to try to play baseball at San Diego State. We'll see. I'm not sure. Just know my mom loves it, so. That's incredible. I mean, there's, there's a, there, there, that's happened. Um, Calvin Munson, who's now been in the NFL for eight years or something like that. His, his, uh, he was a linebacker at state as well. And he came in and he pitched for, um, for the baseball team and, and did that. I mean, have you had any of those conversations or is this just kind of something in the back burner that, that you're going to figure out when you get there? I think it's something in the back burner. I'll figure out when I get there. Cause I don't know how the coaches react or anything. I mean, they say, like I talked to Craig Smith and he's like, I mean, yeah, you can, you can try, but like, I don't want to get overwhelmed with the football, baseball, and then the books. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I know it's going to freshman year is going to be something different. So I'm going to have to get used to it and enjoy it. I don't want to get overwhelmed. I mean, I might obviously it doesn't, it doesn't kill me to try to walk on. It's all, you can always try and always get better. So I might try just, just because I have all fun right. with it. Coach Martinez, there it is. You heard it. You're coming to a city with one of the better baseball teams. And I've been in San Diego my whole life, and I have never been able to say that very often. I haven't just said it very often. So are you going to convert and become a Padres fan? I don't know, man. That's a good question. I don't think you can get me off a Texas Rangers fan. I, okay. I even know you suck a little bit. I don't think you can get me off that. <laughs> I love me the Rangers. The Rangers are uh, made a lot of moves. Corey Seager last year, and they've got a uh, Degrom this year. They're trying to make and they well Bruce Bochy, right? Is the mm-hmm. manager. Yeah, another San Diego, another San Diego connection. So they they're <laughs> trying. It's just you know the, the with the Astros and the Yankees spending, and I don't know. We'll see what the Rangers do. Um, last set of questions. So as a way to get the Aztec fans to get to know you a little bit better, we have some non football related, you know, rapid fire questions. Are you ready for those? Yeah, let's hear. What's your favorite food? Uh so I like me some mac and cheese. I can eat mac and cheese. <laughs> no, right. I like mac and cheese. Panera bread. I was gonna say who who who's mac and cheese though? My mom makes good mac and cheese. There you go. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. What about favorite movie or TV show? I like Avatar. I like the first one, and then I watched the second one. The second one was really good. If you've seen it, it's, you know what I'm talking about. It's I haven't seen movie. the second one yet, but I heard great things about it. I enjoyed the first one a whole bunch. Y'all haven't seen the second one? That's crazy. No, yeah. bro. I, I got I got four children, bro. You know how much it costs to go to the movies? Uh, probably in California. It's probably crazy. Bro. You know, so it's like gas for $5. <laughs> oh, man. we Yeah. That's, yeah that, that, you're not going to get used to that. That's for the record. <laughs> What about favorite musical artist or group? I don't really have a favorite musical artist, I would say. I like I like Lecrae. Have you heard of Lecrae? I like to listen to his music. If you ever heard Tell the World, that's one of my favorite songs. What about pay, favorite professional athlete? It could be a current or a former player. 
I like Bo Jackson because he does it both. Nice. Somebody else has said that. Yeah. Right. Anthony McMillan. Anthony, Anthony McMillan. That's yeah. Right. That's right. That's a, no, just, you know, I, it's, it's, I think probably that one of the more eye opening parts of this is, you know, we do this with all these, all these young guys that we talk about. There's a lot of old souls, man, who, who some are somehow in San Diego State's orbit. The things that y'all are pulling out, like Bo Jackson, how do you even know who Bo Jackson is? You know what I mean? Like, like, it's crazy. Yes, sir. I, actually, that's a good question. Like, Thank you, Andre. I did think it was a good question. <laughs> was done playing before you were probably born, right? Like, how did he become? How did he become somebody that you knew about, watched, maybe a parent or a sibling or, or a family member that kind of pushed you onto him? So you want to know something? So when I was little, I'd always go to my room and I turned on like top plays, uh, football and baseball, and I just sit there and watch it. Like I never had a trainer for baseball really so i just go home and just watch baseball top plays of this season or this is and that or top 100 plays in the mlb history and you know bo jackson running on the wall is pretty cool to me so <laughs> <laughs> bo jackson running the football is pretty cool to me <laughs> oh there's no question no question caleb knows bo you, yeah. do, you, do you get that reference at all no no, so, I've never heard that. Yeah. <laughs> a, there, Bo, there was a, the big commercial. I think Bo it was knows. Nike. Was it Nike? Bo knows everything. Like Bo knows football. Bo knows baseball. I've Bo never knows. Heard of it. I don't think uh, it's okay. What about when you're not playing playing football or baseball? What's your favorite hobby? What do you like doing? I mean, I like to try to cook sometimes. I like to go out, hang out with friends. That's that's uh, that's something I love to do. I have a what's, your, what's your favorite dish to cook? You know, I like to make some breakfast. Breakfast is easy. You know, I can make some good bacon. I mean, I don't think that's cooking it, making it, but <laughs> bacon, eggs, omelets. It counts. Omelets it counts. This is pretty good. And then um, in terms of like a major at San Diego State, I know you're still in high school. You haven't graduated, but have you figured out what you want to study when you get to campus? So right now I'm going into uh, I'm going to try to study in business, maybe. I'm not for sure because I really want to go and try to because my this is my goals is like I want to go if I can't make it to the next level, which I'm going to try my hardest. I want to be like a dentist. And if I can't be a dentist, then I want to be like a firefighter or something because I want to save lives. That's incredible. man. Those are solid, solid, solid choices. <laughs> Caleb, we definitely appreciate you taking the time. Um, we look forward to seeing you uh, get on campus in the summer and, and fall camp and, and see what you can do when you get on the team. Yes, sir. Thank you. Our second guest today is Briley Barron, a 6'4", 310-pound offensive lineman from Texas High School in Texarkana, Texas. Briley played everywhere on the offensive line throughout high school making appearances at center guard and tackle, showing off his versatility. As a senior, he was voted the District 8 5A Division II Offensive Lineman of the Year for his efforts in the fall of 2022. We want to welcome Briley Barron to the SDSU Football Podcast. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing pretty good. Happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, you, you're from Texarkana, Texas. I hope I pronounced that right. It's um, Texarkana. Texarkana. Wait, 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 wait. Andre, you are the biggest music guy ever. And you don't know Cotton Fields by Creedence Clearwater Revival? <laughs> That's no. a good song. It's a great song. Oh, it's great, yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, I'll that, see you that some time. Is that mentioned in the song? Yeah. It yeah. was down in Louisiana, just about a mile from Texarkana. <laughs> It's a great jam, I, I, dude. Not, it's a great jam. CCR. Right. Can you, for those of us that aren't familiar with Texas, can you tell us what part of Texas that is, and if you've been, if you that's where you grew up, or if that's somewhere you ended up in your life? No, no, I've always lived in the Texarkana area. Well, I actually, um, I lived in a little town called Maud, Texas. It's about twelve hundred people. Uh, my dad's owned horses growing up. We lived on basically farmland. Uh. And then later we moved out closer to the, the city of Texarkana, 
which is as far as you can go to Arkansas without actually being in Arkansas. So, yeah. but no, I've always grown up in the country uh, and then just later moved out for some uh, academic reasons. And then obviously it also helps to play football at bigger schools and stuff. Yeah, you know, high school football is king is a phrase that a lot of Texans mention. Mm-hmm. You know, do, do schools from some of the smaller cities like Texarkana play with a chip on their shoulder oh, to absolutely. give respect in, that those other larger cities may? Oh, yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it's really, we call it football, but it's two different sports. If you ever watched a Varsity Blues or a movie of yeah. that sort, that's more depicting smaller school football. Bigger school football is a lot more like, uh, almost like, played like a college level it's a lot more programs whereas it's college football or uh little school football it's just a couple corn fed boys going out in the football field to hurt each other so <laughs> okay so i mean take us through that recruiting process i mean you talk about being on the farm 1200 people and now you're going to be going to one of the largest cities in the world mm-hmm. um what was that recruiting process like for you with sdsu other schools you were considering and 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 why it was that San Diego was going to be your new home. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I've always I, I actually played um, some travel uh, basketball with a guy named uh, T.J. Ford, who uh, he was a lottery pick. So I've always traveled, and um, the the fact that I'm moving away from my parents, I mean, it's going to be rough for a little bit. But uh, I've always I've never had a set home. I've always liked to just go from place to place, and uh, I'm not real worried about um, the uh, moving aspect of it. And then uh, as far as the recruiting goes, I mean. It was really slow starting out, especially because I started so late. I mean, I went from a 2A to a 5A my senior year, and it just – I mean, no one knew my name. And then I just go out there and ball out, and uh, a couple schools are like, man, where have you been? If you you had been here since your sophomore year, you would probably be playing at a lot bigger place. And I said, man, I got San Diego State offer. I mean, it's – that I could I could have a and M Alabama Texas and I'd still probably go to San Diego State. I mean I love it down there. I mean it's pretty sweet. I I really enjoyed it. Now, yes. just for for those of us, um, could you tell us what two A and five A is that that we don't we don't? Oh yeah, okay. Um, so uh, the one of my schools I was at was a two A Division One, which is the step. So 1A would be six-man football, and then 2A is 11-man football. It's as small as you can get uh, without while we'll, we'll still having pads. And then um, <clears throat> my football team at my old school had about 30-ish kids on it. I played both ways. They even let me run the ball some. So <laughs> That's awesome. Played a little tight end my freshman year. Okay. But and then and then you move to five A, which you got a hundred kids just on varsity. And that's mm-hmm. not counting J V freshman team. So it's a lot bigger in far as size. I mean, my graduating class in my old school was maybe thirty, thirty ish people. And my graduating oh. class now is upper a hundred, like oh over I couldn't even tell you it's so big. So SCSU's, you know, they've had a lot of success recruiting in Texas and we're trying, to get to, we're trying to get to the bottom of it, man. Why are so many Texas kids from all over the state coming and finding a home at SCSU? Well, uh, as, far as, as far as I've seen from SDSU, uh, they, they like to pound the ball. They like guys that will put their nose down and go hit somebody, and that's Texas football for you, man. Like, we, we're built I'm, – I'm not saying that it, we're all better here in Texas, but – from what I've seen and I've played against, we like hitting people here. Uh, we don't shy away from the pain of, you know, pulling and hitting the hitting that DN or running through a linebacker. So, I mean, we just we just like ground and pound football here in Texas. It's how we were raised. And SDSU, I mean, they ground and pound the football. They like they like to run the ball. And I, I mean, that was one big decision when uh, looking at the schools recruiting me, like what system do I want to go in and what system really uh, exemplifies what my personality is and how I play. So, and that was SDSU for me. You got that SDSU offer in October. You made an official visit. 
in December and announced your commitment, I think at the end of your visit or maybe shortly thereafter, mm-hmm. you know, who was, how was your visit? Who was your host? What were some of the highlights? Um, my host was a, a guy, a Cade Bennett. I think he's the starting right guard or left guard. Left guard. Left guard. Yep. And uh, he was actually a transfer from uh, OSU, which was one of the other schools that were recruiting me. And he just gave me a little insight to what was going on with their program and why he felt the SDSU was a good move. And, you know, I really liked him. I trusted him. He uh, seemed like a genuine person. So listening to him and then listening to some of the other stuff that was just going on, uh, I really thought SDSU would been a, was a lot better place to be. And, and um, I'm a big uh, fan of when a coach, like, puts a lot of trust into a player. And that's all I got from golf was, hey, from all my visits, it was like, who's this guy? He must be some coach's nephew that they just let on the field. And when I got to San Diego State, it was like they were investing in me. They were investing just words and words of, uh, hey, we want you here. We got a plan for you. Once you come here, it's going to change for you. We want you here. And that really, that really was the step that got me to go. And because that, that means a lot to me when someone believes in my talent and trusts in what I can do. How would you describe your game? And, you know, what kind of offensive lineman are you? Oh, I'm definitely a bruiser. <clears throat> I like to – I'm a run game guy. I mean, uh, they don't they don't throw the ball a whole lot from uh, them little schools. So my pass game is uh, not as developed as I'd like it to be. It's going to get there, though. Mm-hmm. In the, the year I was at the school I'm at now, we had a guy that uh, – my head offensive line coach was an um, Arkansas alum. And uh, he he he's been coaching for twenty ish years, and the uh, the week one film to the week eight film, it was like I was a totally different person. You wouldn't be able to tell. You would have thought, hey, who who moves to Texas High in the middle of the year? Who's that new player? Because my I I just the more I play and the more I get reps, I mean, there, I've never really thought there was much of a ceiling for me. It's just how. How invested are you into um, giving me reps and giving me time to get better and just really develop my skills and offensive linemen? But as far as what type of player I am, it's definitely I love the run game. Uh, I've played in a wing T system. I didn't like it, but I did enjoy running the ball at nearly every play uh, going from a pro style, which I love the pro style more because it's more pulling for me. I love the pull. I love the kick. I love to put people on their back. It's just what I love to do. I like the humility there because being a different player, you, you, you grew so much that they named you in your district, the offensive lineman of the year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just for everybody, the research that I did, there's, there's players who were on that first team, including one of your teammates from Texas high, mm-hmm. I mean, multiple offers to go play, you know, at the next mm-hmm. level and all this kinds of stuff. And in that district, in only one year, because a lot of times that stuff can be political, and a new guy comes in, and even though he might be really good, you know, but you were the offensive lineman of the year. What did it mean for you to be able to make that jump up to 5A, like you said, and then to, to, to be recognized for that work that you put in to be named the top lineman in the district? You know, I've always been getting awards uh, as far as being for an offensive lineman. It did mean something for me to get offensive lineman of the year, but – at the end of the day, it's just an award. The The gratification I get from winning and the gratification I get from my coaches and when we watch film and they go, hey, Briley, that was a great play right there. I love seeing that. That's what really gets me up in the morning. I love when I get that feeling of accomplishment from my coaches and from, you know, after games when we're singing the fight song and the cheerleaders are cheering and everyone's happy, that's what I love. The awards come second to that for me. I couldn't have come up with a better answer. That's incredible. So tell us about like um, position wise, what did you play in high school? Where do you kind of see yourself? Where has been the conversations at the next level? I, uh, I played center all through junior high and a little bit my freshman year. And then I got a growth spurt and they switched me to tackle and I played tackle for a couple of years. And then just recently this last year, I played guard. So I've played all across the line. I've played both left and right side. Um, I think that's one reason why San Diego State kind of likes me is I'm pretty versatile as far as 
where I can play on the line. I'm not going to tell them, hey, they're not going to tell me, hey, we want you to play guard. I'm going to say, no, I'm a right guard. No, I'm going to – I'm going to get as many reps as I can wherever I can get them. And uh, if that's playing center, that's playing center. If that's playing guard, that's playing guard. I know their starting center just declared for the draft, I believe. Yeah. I know that that's a spot maybe I go and try to get some reps at. But really, the only person that knows where I'm going to be playing is Coach Goff. And wherever he tells me to play, that's where I'm going to play. Good answer. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned earlier at your prior school you played defensive line or both ways. Uh, you were the District 9-2A Defensive Player of the Year as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. What position did you play uh, on the defensive line and how, you know, how, how much fun was that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I will. I've actually, you know, I, I've probably always been better at defense, but I just love the art of offensive line. There's so much technique and so much footwork. It's really not even football. It's like a dance. And I've always enjoyed that aspect of it, but I played um, anywhere from head up nose on the center to playing a seven technique on the end, wherever they thought they were running the ball. That's where they put me because I was just, I was I would take up two of the three blocks nearly every play. It's tough for people to block people my size, especially in 2A, where the size and caliber of offensive linemen is pretty lacking. Not many schools have people my size, especially in 2A. So just anywhere they thought they were going to run the ball, they like to put me there. Mike Goff, when he played for the Chargers, he had a teammate, uh, Chris Dealman. Mm -hmm. who was converted from the defensive line to offensive line. And Dealman credited the more attacking style of defense with his success on the offensive line. Do you find that being good on the defense helps you on the offensive side? Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of similarities to a bull rush and a kick on the end. I mean, it's just run as hard as you can and hit knock the lights off the guy. So absolutely. And as far as hand placement on the defensive line, and footwork and speed drills. Uh, a defensive lineman, all he really is, is an in-shape offensive lineman. So they're just a lot healthier than we are. We like to eat a little bit more. <laughs> Coach uh, Goff, man, he, uh, I think you guys are going to get along. He's, he's quite a personality. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what is he like on the recruiting trail, and how exciting is it for you to play with somebody who, you know, has been a lot, was a long-time NFL vet? Oh man, it's it's sweet. Yeah, he uh man, he made a he made a great impression. Um, my parents loved him. He uh did a great job of recruiting not just me, but recruiting my parents as San Diego State fans. So uh, not just he he didn't just gain a player. He gained about twenty fans with all the last name of Baron. I love that he's a he's a he's been to the he knows how to get to that next level which any any player that plays college football if his dream isn't to make it the pro then i mean what's he really doing uh, i would love to go and play pro and as, as anybody he's he's the best guy for it i mean he's done it he's played a long time at the pro level and if there's anybody that's going to teach me how to do it it's going to be him now you mentioned living in mod uh which if i'm not mistaken it's like a a little bit southwest from Texarkana, you know, you play there for three years. Uh, what, 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 why did you transfer, you know, for whatever details you're able to share from uh, Mod to, to Texas High? Well, uh, my parents, they, they've always worked in Texarkana. Um, my mom owns a dress shop and my stepdad owns a tractor and a, a tractor dealership. So it, it was, uh, they moved there and it was better for them. And then, uh, not the not the hate on mod, but no. at five A's they have a lot better education system. So it, they got a lot more college courses. So uh, it gave me a chance to learn more and uh, really get a whole lot of college credit. So when I get to college, I'm already starting on my bachelor's in whatever subject or field I want to study in. And then and then uh, football was. I mean, everybody wants to play at a bigger level. Um, that wasn't a huge deciding factor for me, but it sure did. I mean, it's, it's, it, it was fun this year to play football at that level. I'm not going to lie. It was fun. Okay. So then you have to, um, move to a new team, right? Obviously you're doing that again this year. Yeah. So d did you pick up on anything or some, you know, little tips or little things for yourself to be able to get acclimated to a new team and be able to be that new person and, and, and still, 
you know, be a full part of the team and still mm -hmm. do all the things you want to do? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it, it benefits me because uh, San Diego State runs a very similar to offense to what we ran at my high school. We ran a very uh, college style, pro style offense. Um, and then as far as like getting along with the players at Texas High, I mean, obviously there's a there's a difference between the kid that grew up in the town and kind of grew up in the ghetto and me that grew up in the uh, in the straight countryside. But I've always had a real easy time getting along with people. I wouldn't say I'm a people pleaser, but I, I don't enjoy when people uh, don't don't uh, don't enjoy my presence. So I got along with a lot of the players really well. And then um, and then I'm able to switch that go on the field. And a lot of people did not like me on the practice field, especially the defensive ends. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are the only people on the team that did not enjoy me for a while there. <laughs> what, what are you focused on now? before you get to campus that you, you want to improve on or work on uh, so you can hit the ground running next season? Um, well, uh, just recently I've started um, snapping a little bit more. It, it'd be nice to get get that to where they don't have to worry about me uh, ever messing up a snap so they can just throw me in there right away. And then uh, just like getting my um, body fully healthy, fully ready to go. It's never really been an issue. I've never – well, I've actually never missed a high school game for an injury. And uh, I'd like to keep that level at the – keep that up at the college level. I've, you know, one of my favorite players ever was uh, Jason Witten for the Cowboys. And the fact that he was able to go that many games without ever missing one is one of the coolest things to me. And uh, I really – that's how I want to be. I don't want to be the guy that have to miss a game or I want to be able to step in. I want to be able to be that utility guy that they can always depend upon to go in, win the game for them. Seeing this thing went away from its trend last year, played a lot of younger offensive linemen, uh, started two redshirt freshmen. Uh, have, what has the staff told you about opportunities to play early? You know, you mentioned you want to get some reps at center. Um, has that conversation happened with Coach Goff? Oh uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm not I'm not trying to steal anybody's job, but obviously I'm going to work hard to steal somebody's job. And if that happens. Things. it's no hard feelings we're all teammates we're all trying to win and then rather we I might redshirt I might not like I said golf golf knows that he do, I don't I don't know that golf's going to be the main decider whether or not I'm going to play or I'm not going to play whether I redshirt or not redshirt um whatever he tells me to do that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it 100 all day every day and work hard so when is it that you plan to enroll and, and get on campus uh, the first week of June, I believe, will be the first week I'll be making my way down there. And or that's what I've been told anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting that answer from uh, quite a few players. Now, you weren't just a football player, man, in high school. You, you play basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. track, powerlifting. How, how were you, one, able to do so much? And, and, and all, all of those, man, what was your favorite – Oh, I love, love basketball. It's been my favorite sport. At a, um, I, I told you earlier, I played some travel ball with a guy named TJ Ford, who uh, actually took me um, to some, we went to Vegas one time and played against uh, Bronny James. And then we played a lot of tournaments in Houston. And I love basketball. Um, if, if I could figure out a way to uh, maybe lose some weight, maybe I'd be a basketball player, but uh Man, I, I love eating. I love eating so much. I mean, that's a that's a line <laughs> for you right there. And then I love being strong and having muscle. And a lot of them basketball players don't have a lot of muscle like offensive linemen. So my body wasn't made to play basketball, even though I did love it. And then uh, my dad was always a big basketball guy. The school he went to actually didn't have football. He only played basketball, baseball, and track. So. Uh, he grew up teaching me basketball and I guess that was just kind of a way of us to um, connect because we both had a extreme love for the game of basketball. Uh, I was never a big fan of baseball. Uh, we played it because all my buddies played it. Gotcha. And then when I'm, I, I like to be humble, but I consider myself a pretty good athlete and uh, I picked up a baseball bat and it just came natural to me as, as most of these sports that you've seen that I've played did. And I got a funny story. My eighth grade year, um, 
we actually ran uh, the 300 meter hurdles and got second. Wow. And, and people do that. And then I tell them uh, there was two people in the race, my buddy and me. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't tell them that part of the story. I, no, just, let good. Them, I just let them be baffled by a big man running the 300 meter, 300 meter hurdles. So. <laughs> no doubt. Um, you know, we've, we've talked to a lot of the coaches, you know, obviously, and, and they mentioned that they encourage, they like when their players play multiple sports because it just gives them, I guess, multiple intelligences when mm-hmm. as, as an athlete or whatever the right phrasing is. Um, how do you feel like playing all of those sports allows you to be a better football player? Oh, um, definitely in basketball, as I was a postman and learned technique and footwork, and that footwork has definitely translated to the sport of football playing offensive line having to have you no know, people think you just got to be big and strong now you have to have amazing great footwork to play offensive line and the fact that that footwork from basketball has translated to football so well I don't know I don't know if I'd be able to pass block if I'd ever if I didn't ever play basketball I mean having to be able to guard somebody from the from the back and de- defend them from getting the ball into the hoop I mean it's just like guarding somebody on uh, guarding a defensive lineman rushing the pa- uh, the quarterback. So ba- uh, ba- basketball has definitely translated to the game of football really well. And then as far as baseball, the 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 movement of swinging a bat and thrusting your hips, all that throwing motion is all help translate to throwing punches or sliding left, sliding right, or coming out of your stance, explosive. All of it has helped with football. So I definitely, I, I definitely think that as far as football players should definitely try to play other sports. I know it helped me a lot. Um, as a, as a way to get Aztec fans to get to know you a little bit better, we have some non football related uh, questions. You ready for those? Okay, go ahead. What's your favorite food? Who I, I love steak. Steak is definitely my favorite food. And, uh, you know, this is just a little side. One of my favorite places to eat, and this is not steak. Steak is still my favorite food, but it's uh, Dave's Hot Chicken. We just mm. got one in Dallas area, and it's one of my favorite places to eat. And I know it's from the L.A. area, and I know that San Diego State has a three or four places now. That's one place I'm excited about uh, getting to eat when I come out there. Go. Well, have, have you had a discussion about Whataburger versus In-N-Out Burger? Oh yeah. my gosh! I think when I when I went on my official visit, that was a a big argument because I'm a I'm a huge Whataburger fan. I grew up in FFA, which is Future Farmers of America. My dad was a was an ag teacher, so I always went on the events and uh the the four thirty uh the four thirty truck ride to the cow shows. We'd always eat Whataburger in the morning. So I think Whataburger is probably the best fast food place. And I don't know if that's because it's good or because it's so nostalgic, but yeah. I love it. What about a favorite movie or TV show? Who that's a tough one. I Man, movie, movie's hard. Favorite TV show, uh, obviously there's Breaking Bad. That That's a good one. That That's some yeah. of the best lines I've ever seen. Uh, I, uh, there's a show called Vikings on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love uh, like Viking uh, memorabilia, the history, all that stuff is so cool to me. Uh, the fact that like uh, the axe, like I actually built some axes in my ag class last year just because how cool I thought all the uh, all the Viking stuff is. So that's probably my favorite TV show if I had to give one. You build axes? <laughs> I, I built a I built two axes in a, my ag class last year for ag mechanics, and then I took them to a uh, a show and they got judged one axe was pretty awful but the other one actually functioned well and i made a uh i made a throwing axe board for it so i think the day after the event we were all throwing axes at the board outside of class and then uh it got shut down by the principal they were like oh i can't imagine why i can't imagine why 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 would they do that school ground we can't have you throwing axes on school grounds you got to take those home Uh, now now uh, at mod would you have been able to throw axes would have been okay no, that's where they got. Uh, I'm got, just joking. <laughs> uh, okay, y'all know, no, I get what you're saying now. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, favorite musical artist or group? I've recently gotten into a. I'm a big country guy. Uh, I love Coulter Wall. He might be my favorite. I love Coulter Wall. Tyler Chidler's is a real good one. 
I think I'm saying the, the last – I always get the last name wrong. Uh, Zach Bryan, Co Wetzel, uh, all all them guys from um, that sing country rock, country rock. Uh, Coulter Wall is more of like an old timey cowboy country. Uh, so I really like him. I've always I've always been big on the cowboys. That's what my family's always done. My dad actually rodeoed, and yeah. uh, and we go and watch the we like watching them the RCA every year. And I know it's big out there now. Yeah. Can you rodeo? I, I had to choose between rodeoing and football, and uh, got it. I chose got I chose it. football. Maybe, maybe I would be a bulldogger in another another life. But uh, <laughs> what about a favorite professional athlete? Ooh, um, as far as football goes, I love Quentin Nelson. Okay, uh, offensive lineman for the Colts. Oh yeah, Quentin Nelson's probably my favorite player in the NFL right now. And then uh, growing up on basketball, my dad was a huge Larry Bird fan. And he kind of gave me that love in the same way as uh, when I first started learning basketball, he made me watch a, a 30-minute clip called Larry Bird Tutorial to Basketball. Wow. And that was the first ever basketball tutorial slash game I ever watched. And, uh, and I, even, I even have a, a, a jersey signed by him now that I got for Christmas one year. So he'd probably be my favorite player of all time. I, I really enjoyed Larry Bird. And then uh, recently, I'm a big Mavs fan. So, oh, Luka Doncic. He, that man, yeah. that man's yeah. crazy right now. I went to a business trip to Dallas last year, and I went to a Mavs game. And I got to see him in person. So that was really cool. Oh, yeah. He's a, yeah, he's a good one. What about when you're not playing – Five, the five different sports that you uh, play. And what do you like to? What What else do you like? What's your favorite hobby? I have a. I like to play video games. I guess. Um, I know. Uh, have you all seen that new Last of Us TV show on HBO? Yes. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. I played, I played the games all when they first came out. I, I love video games. Um, the Uncharted series. I played all those just recently. Uh, Skyrim's. I like Skyrim. I'm so busy now that it's hard to play video games, but uh, I do enjoy playing video games. And then um, obviously I like to go fishing with my dad and go squirrel hunting. I do love some squirrels. People think I told some people that in San Diego and they went, oh, squirrels, that sounds nasty. Oh, no, they taste like fried chicken. You throw some gravy on them. Oh, my grandma would always eat the brains. I never got into that. but Yeah, see, I, I, OK, so now this is a, this is a. I don't the, the I don't know anything about squirrels. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'm also a school teacher, mm -hmm. so um, my my thing with squirrels is that right outside of my classroom, every spring, baby baby squirrels would pop up, and then you get to see them get a little bigger, whatever. Is there a difference between those like city domesticated squirrels and like the squirrels that you're hunting? In Texas, no, they all they all taste the same to me. Okay, okay. I, I didn't know if one was, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no about idea about the ones squirrels. in the in the jungles or in the fields are bigger. And is that where you're trying to get at, Paul? No, I just, I, I just, ha I just have no idea because you know, I've never seen a, I don't, I've never seen like a wild squirrel. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen a city squirrel. I see, you know what I mean? Like in yeah, the, like, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I was just wondering if there was a difference. And so I mean, I'm assuming you're not in town getting those squirrels. You're getting squirrels. No, we, we, we go out into the, the countryside and just walk into the forest with some dogs and they go up and tree a squirrel. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the last one, uh, you have an idea, any idea what you want to study or what your major is going to be at, at San Diego State? Uh, I've ran through some other, I thought maybe engineer, but I've never been great with math. And then I ran through some ideas of maybe being like a uh, – like a safety coordinator, or safety manager on job sites, but I'm thinking I'm I'm not real sure just yet. I want to do something real broad. So right so right when I get out of college, I have a wide variety of jobs I can pick from, and I don't have to deal with, you know, not not that job not being available in five years. Awesome. Riley Barron, the most interesting man in the world. I, I I'm like, I I mean, you do everything. It's absolutely most incredible like that is so cool man that, that you got so many varied interests and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff man i think i think uh 
I think you're you're already a fan favorite, man. Once everyone hears this and, and <laughs> well, gets a cover, man. Great well, job, no, brother. Y'all never got my uh, one act play uh, credentials, did y'all? See what? No, come on. What do you mean? Uh, I used to do a one act play at my old school. I was um thespian of the. I was male thespian of the year. Wow. Okay. Our our research went deep. I mean, I thought I thought defensive player of the year sophomore year was a pretty good find, but you were the thespian of the year. I was thespian of the year for a two A Division one. Oh come and, on. Uh, wow. We did a comedy two years. I remember one year they had me play the grandma. Uh, <laughs> the only the, the judges, the only thing they could say about me was unrealistic grandma. Grandmas don't have chest hair. <laughs> and uh, wow. I think some lady from a, she said in a real Southern accent, well, you must never saw my grandma. So uh, <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Uh, no, but I did used to love one act play. I, I actually thought about maybe minoring in some, uh acting or something at san diego state and then after football career just flying right over to la and trying to make my way through hollywood oh, you you have my vote <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome man that's awesome riley thank you so much i know it's late uh for you out there in texas uh we appreciate you taking the time and look forward to seeing you out there uh, in the fall all right yeah yeah thanks for letting me come on the uh the podcast i really enjoyed it Paul, that was our Texas-themed episode. <laughs> yeah. Interviews with uh, Caleb and Briley, two of the three Texas uh, signings as part of the class of 2023. Let's start with Caleb, two-sports star. Uh, really in- intriguing to hear him talk about how baseball is his mom's favorite sport, that he thought that if he, he would be saying, you know, I'm going to San Diego State to play baseball – you know, not necessarily say I'm going to San Diego State to play football, but that's where he is. He he enjoys that more. Uh, what would you make of our conversation with him? You know, a lot of guys play other sports, you know, that we've talked to. They don't always play it at a high enough level to get scholarship offers. Um, and, and so I thought that was pretty significant. I mean, just to be able to have like four ACC schools, I believe he said, have reached out and have offered him the opportunity to play baseball. I, I thought that was pretty significant. You know, I, I personally think that there is something to being able to excel in multiple ways, being able to excel in multiple sports. I do think that matters. And so I think that's probably the biggest takeaway is sometimes it's, it's challenging. I think looking at a huddle tape to truly see how athletic somebody is, but when they can, you know, dial it up to, to 93 on the diamond. I think it just gives you an idea of the kind of athlete that San Diego state is getting. I think he really fits the, the kind of longer, quicker, more athletic player that, uh, you know, has been popping up and they've been recruiting in addition to what they've been successful at, which, which is kind of just those football players who don't necessarily fit a particular mold. What about you? He deflected a lot of passes using his long arms, his length. It was not just his speed off the outside, but sometimes when he wasn't going to get there, he put his hand up and deflected a lot of passes. And that's something we don't see a ton of from San Diego State. Um, And maybe that's something I I liked the connection with Dom Oliver, his player host. You know, we've talked a lot about Dom Oliver here. He hasn't been someone that's seen the field yet. But uh, very similar types of players, edge rushers, speed guys, you know, and, and they're going to, as he talked about, they're going to learn from each other. They're going to push each other. Um, obviously, Dom Oliver is two years ahead of Caleb in terms of uh, experience and practice and, and uh, that sort. But I'll be interested to see, you know, how, how those two guys progress. I, I also thought it was interesting where he mentioned UTSA with his first offer. You know, San Diego State, he played UTSA in the Frisco Bowl. And I'm curious if he watched that game. We didn't ask him necessarily, but if he watched that game and saw San Diego State, you know, beat down UTSA, if that kind of gave him like, oh, this would be a really cool team to to go to. He said the first, when he came to San Diego on an official visit, it was his first time in California. You know, it's kind of, we as Californians, <laughs> Uh, it's hard to fathom someone that says, you know, I'm 17, 18 years old and I came to California for the first time. Uh, I remember Tyson Berry said the same thing 
uh, who's the first Texas guy that we interviewed uh, back in the summer out of those three guys who committed about how he was like, this is Cali, man. Uh, this is where I want to be. How, why would you not want to be here? You get the same vibes from Caleb when he was talking about, you know, this is California. Uh, this is a special place. And this is where he wanted to be. I just echoing that. I, I also thought it was really special, the conversation with Dom Oliver. And I, I couldn't help but just see the similarities. I mean, both of them seem to be very goal oriented, trying to like, you know, accomplish the things that they want to accomplish, um, being able to have high expectations for their time in, in, in San Diego. You know, I think it was Dom Oliver who said he wanted to be the all time sack leader in, in uh, program yeah. history. And um, I think a lot of that same drivenness, I think you could see from Caleb. And I thought that I don't think it's an accident to show the skill level of the staff. I don't think it was an accident that the two of those guys got to be there. Right. I mean, Obviously, yeah. if you if you get if you get the wrong player host, as we've seen, you know, with Isaiah McIlvain being brought up time and time again from not even from even players outside of his position group, you know, if if they get the wrong if they get the player host, that can make all the difference. The fact that you know we could hear a lot of the similar traits with Dom Oliver in Caleb means probably the coaching staff did too, and that they were able to to pair those guys just again shows that skill. And, you know, I think you can you can really see why a kid would want to leave Texas to, to come and have the opportunity to form that relationship and to have that same, you know, people who are driven like the two of them at that young of an age, I think are still rare. I mean, a lot of a lot of these guys kind of parrot what you see on social media, but you can I think sometimes you can tell the difference between somebody who's just saying the thing that they're supposed to say and the people who are actually there. I think people like that attract each other. So I thought that was really special. And, and, you know, I couldn't help, obviously they coincided so much, you know, timing wise, you know, but you already mentioned Tyson Berry, um, this being our Texas show, you know, Caleb. And then what is Jeff Horton's absence going to truly mean to the Aztecs? I, I'm, I'm not sure that it's ever something that could be like quantifiable, you know, yeah. but the way that the running back room was able to get along, but then I think, you know, the way he was able to, to recruit Las Vegas, way able to recruit all of Nevada, able to recruit so much of Texas. And just, I mean, his name comes up over and over again. And I'm going to be paying attention, right? I mean, does the Texas pipeline continue? Because it, it didn't. It didn't exist before Coach Horton. You know, people, people here or there, you know, but as this pipeline of year in and year out, and so to see if that will continue. Last thought for me on on you know on Caleb, I, I think it's an exciting mix of you know just potential. Um, you look down the road, and you know obviously Dom Oliver was brought here to be a linebacker, but he slid to the defensive line last year. And if he stays there, these guys are lining up next to each other, and you know you you could really see the potential for. I mean, both of these guys are just really quick off the ball. Obviously, Dom has has done it in practice and has done has shown that at the D one level in 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 that regard. His tape definitely from high school translated to what's in practice and what people have been saying about him, which is his first step and stuff. And so I think that that one of the the interesting things with the way the three three five is, these guys probably are not competing with each other for time, but they're going to somehow figure out how to complement each other. And you know, if they're able to be stout against the run. Two really quick, dynamic athletes um, could be wreaking havoc shortly for the Aztecs. Yeah, and if he does walk on on the baseball team, he was he he played it smart. He said, "I got to talk to the football coaches because he knows, you know, what he's coming here for. What what who's paying for a scholarship, right? You know, and and that overlap between baseball and spring practice is kind of a critical." critical overlap that, you know, you, you have to be careful for. So it's interesting though, that you just said that, cause I, I, it made me think of another thought. The, the interesting part though, I think too, is that San Diego state plays a very early spring camp relative to I think, yeah. other teams. And so like most spring camps being later, the baseball season would go for like a month. And then like, he would be warming up with them, participating a little bit. Then he would jump over. And then he would jump back. And I think the way that it could work out at San Diego State, I mean, you know, obviously we're talking down the road, 
next year. I think like their seasons and the spring camp are almost at the exact same time. And so it could be one of those things where, you know, he does spring camp and then he has a much more extended time um, in the baseball season. But yeah, it, it's interesting to, to, to see how it works out. And at a school that had a basketball point guard figure out that he was, you know, one of the best baseball players ever, that's always going to be a, you know, a storyline and something to pay attention to. Yeah. You know, moving to Briley, we had two firsts on the podcast talking about hunting squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Nothing about, which I, now I know a little bit about and you singing. That yeah, was bro. Hurt. I didn't think that was going to happen. Maybe you know, it was well, me, but still that was you, you uh, singing a tune. You know, bro, I, I, um, I, I, I can throw down a tune a little bit. I just can't believe you don't know the song. I mean, in all in all sincerity, I mean, you know, CCR. Do you like CCR? You like I do. CCR? But I, I was not familiar with that particular song. Okay, it, it's definitely it's definitely a, um you know like one of their deeper tracks for sure. I'd be lying to you if I knew anything else about Texarkana other than that it's in a Creedence Clearwater Revival song. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought what was interesting about his story was that his recruiting was non-existent because. He played his first three years of high school, somebody where n- nobody really knew him or had heard of him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, finally he gets to his senior year. And you know, I think he mentioned one of his coaches said, where have you been this whole time? Yeah. And San Diego State was there recruiting him. And, and I thought it was interesting when he said, you know, he would play at San Diego State over like A&M and Alabama uh, because he felt that trust and that bond with, San Diego State uh, and the program, so that, that was cool to hear. You, you talked about being, you know, natives of California and stuff like that, and maybe there's pockets. I mean, there's definitely pockets of this like this in the state, but the idea that like he moved to Texarkana and that was like moving to the city, and it has you know thirty six thousand people. You know what I mean? Like it's like the size of Imperial Beach. Yeah. It's just it's just an interesting dynamic, and so I think that that I think you do see in him that thing that that country creativity that country freedom i think his personality i think it'll it'll play really well in a locker room i mean the thespian of the year yeah Uh, i i mean i couldn't i couldn't i didn't want to stop talking to him he was he was he was hilarious he was you know intelligent he was you know just just everything that 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 you would want in an interview but i also thought that that was a really good insight that you just mentioned because you know you you ever I mean that's what you do right I mean the way the recruiting services are there's like five star four star and then this bevy of three stars that they tell them apart by hundreds of a point and all this kind of stuff is yeah. it just it's just so hard to be like okay yeah you can divide a person into their hundreds and so what you do is you go and you say who has offered this kid. And that gives you an idea of maybe where they're at, right? And obviously, they they interplay with each other and why they get stars because they have whatever. So he was a mystery, yeah. you know. He what he was a mystery. San Diego State was was at least listed, although he did list um, uh, Oklahoma State. I thought that was a pretty interesting thing. Again, tip of the hat to the staff. If Fair Oklahoma enough. State, if Oklahoma State's talking to you. Let's have your player host be a guy who transferred from Oklahoma State, right? Yeah. Um, they're, they're not, right? I mean, this, it's just what it is. Um, so it's very smart. They played their hand very, very well. But to be able to, to understand that dynamic and, and, again, to show up, to show up in a new league and jump all the kids who have been there their whole life to, 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 to be better than those guys and to say this is the best offensive lineman in the league. I think it just shows where he's at and that he is, you know, on par with some of the other linemen who, you know, have been a lot more higher regarded that that he's that he's right there with him and that this, this just should be somebody that, you know, Assignation is very excited that the staff was able to find and land um because a lot of teams did not a lot of teams did not see this kid a lot of teams were unable to do their homework and offer him and get in on it and and i think it looks like man they they may have found um a diamond in the rough so to speak he's versatile he's played all five positions 
but he's probably more of an interior lineman. He said he's practicing snapping to make sure he's got that. But he was pretty honest and transparent about his how his pass blocking is not as developed as his run blocking. And, you know, to his credit to being forthright with that, that probably also means he's not likely to get on the field right away until that diamond in the rough kind of pr- progresses and develops, potentially becomes a starter, you know, second, third year moving forward. I do want to mention one other thing he he said that I wrote down that I don't think I'd ever heard before, but I thought was awesome was he said a defensive lineman is just an in shape offensive lineman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was great. Like, absolutely. I had never heard that before, but uh, hearing him say that, especially as an offensive lineman, um, obviously he played defensive line too at some point, but it, I, I thought that was really cool. I'd never heard that before. It definitely uh, something I wanted to, to jot down and, and remember because it, it makes sense. No, it does make sense. And I, and I thought it was pretty funny how he also said that he liked basketball. The same kind of comment. He said he likes to eat too much. Otherwise, otherwise he, he might, he might be a basketball player. Given those interests coming to San Diego state makes, you know, makes a lot of sense. Um, I remember when years and years and years ago before the show was doing their thing, Akbar Bajabi Amila was a defensive lineman, uh, you know, American Ninja Warrior with the Raiders and NFL, et cetera. He comes over and sits next to me. And I and if you if you know Viejas Arena, imagine the student section. There's like the main center section, and then there's the the if you're looking at the court to the right of the main center section, but down there on the floor, there's kind of a narrow section that, that students also sit in. And so we're we're two rows from the court. And I forget the poor team that was there, but he is just laying into the bench. And now normally when people of my stature or other people lay into the bench, they're kind of relishing it a little bit. Like, you know, all right, I'm the big player. You're the whatever, you know, whatever, whatever. But when Akbar Bajabi Amila, defensive lineman, huge dude, was was yelling and screaming they just kind of hunched over a little bit and they you know and so maybe for uh brian dutcher and his crew getting getting briley baron there and and being able to to be a member of the show he loves basketball and and to be that you know physical imposing presence being able to to cheer on the aztecs all you know in the same way that that akbar bajabi amila did i'm telling you he he absolutely akbar did uh influence the game um in in that one episode that i just you know, laid out, but I also think too, you know, that I really thought it, it with him and also with, with Ryan Silver, who we did before their relationship with Mike Goff, the mm-hmm. respect that they have for Mike Goff. Um, I think you can see that, that people, that kids want to play for him. Um, and so I thought that was pretty neat. Just, just being able to get some of that inside information, the way that he's able to, you know, not just recruit him, but went over the whole family you know, I, I I just think that that you know it it's hard sometimes. I mean, you just look at how many different interviews Mike Goff did last year, um, and there, you could probably count them on one hand, uh, maybe two, and, and so you just kind of lose a little bit of that personality. But but that but these kids have it, and these kids really appreciate you know the man that he is and and how he's able to you know be a good ambassador for San Diego State. I, I thought that was pretty neat how that came across. As as you brought up earlier replacing coach Horton in Texas, Mm -hmm. it's going to be hard and it's probably not going to be done by just one person. It may need to be interesting split up and we will see who the wide receiver and running back and defensive line coaches end up being because San Diego state expects to have those guys hired within two weeks. Yep. When spring, well, spring practice, I think is supposed to start. February 20th or on around then. So you want to get those guys, obviously. Yeah. Not not just hired, but like at least in some coach meetings and stuff before you get on the practice field. So two weeks, definitely. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's from San Diego state when, when we were, you know, putting in some of our uh, podcast requests to, to, to get with, with some of the staff and, and people like that. So be expecting those in the future. Um, we've already put in the request for the unnamed people, 
you know, what San Diego State said is that they would hope to have those people within the next couple of weeks. Two weeks was was the number. So, you know, a little bit of information there. No, I agree. And I, I, let me ask you this question. Uh, with, with both positions, man, both of these guys, and, you know, we'll get into this as, as spring practice and things go along. But I think it's fair to say that linebacker and offensive line going into spring camp are going to be some of the question marks, All right? How would you rate the, the, the strength of those two positions um, for the Aztecs is, you know, at this first month of 2023? Linebacker, I feel better about with Cody Moon in the picture mm. because I think that gives you, I think that gives you your three starters. With, Give them to me. Uh, Cooper McDonald, Cody Moon, and Zyrus Fiasse. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you have to feel good about it, you no know, going in and saying we have our three starters. And now it's a matter of who can compete with them and who can challenge them and become the starters or who's going to be the primary backups. That's the problem, I think, is who are those back two deep guys? Because that that's the one where I I don't know. You know, you would think Vicajo is in there. 100%. But, you know, he's he moved down the depth chart last year mm -hmm. um, instead of moving up. And and Michael Shawcroft kind of gave us a little bit of insight into that. Yep. Um, but now he's got his senior year and his chance to work his way back in. Then you've got some of the younger guys, Daryl Masaniai, DJ mm -hmm. Herman, Brady Anderson. And mm -hmm. then you've got some of the, the younger, Trey White from last year. Yep. You know, you've obviously got Caleb. You've got some of the newer guys. So that I feel good about line more line more about I feel better about the linebackers than I do with the offensive line because I feel like they've got their three starters and now it's about competition and depth. I'm a little bit surprised that you didn't name your guy. Which guy? New Zealand Williams. Ah, uh, yeah, he, he, you're a big. You've always been a big New Zealand Williams guy. You see him in practice, and you know just just from the from the get go, and they moved him to weak side linebacker, and so that's another. Again, a person that 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 you know, it'll be interesting to see exactly you know where he fits in, and you know if he if he stays in that position, and if they can find him some time. But I I think he's a very very intriguing player, you know, because I think you mention those starters, and and I'm not, and you know, Cody Moon, I, I don't have a great feel for this yet, but I don't necessarily when I think of you know Zyrus and I and I, and I think of McDonald. I don't know that I necessarily think of guys who can just straight cover, mm -hmm. you know, like, like you could with Shawcroft, you know, and as teams spread them out, can those guys that you just mentioned, you know, can they provide that help in the middle of the field to be able to do run and pass? And I think that, you know, at that, that intriguing mix of, of New Zealand Williams with his size and you know, obviously his health permitting and stuff like that being able to get into that mix. I, I just think that, that there's a, a really good competition. So you feel better at linebacker, even though there's way more starters coming back on the offensive line. Yes, because nice. Okay. Tell me because the offensive line perform was probably the, the weakest unit on the team last year. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest surprise and disappointment in, in this recruiting period was the lack of, FBS transfers at offensive line. All right, you're you brought in a JUCO guy, Kyle Stanbeck. Don't know that much about him. He's obviously a JUCO guy. He's small in terms of weight, so I don't know uh, how if he's ready to play Division One right away. But what are you going to do at center to replace uh, Alama? That's like the biggest question mark going into 2023, I would say, out of, out of many question mark, but the biggest one is who's going to snap the ball to Jalen Maiden? Yeah, that's right? a huge question, yeah. We saw a lot of times in the few in the practices we went to last year, when the backups came in to snap the ball, there was a lot of bad snaps. And this is multiple of people. Um, and we a few times we're standing next to each other, we're talking about, wow, those, these snaps are bad. And obviously there's plenty of time to improve that over the year. It's not just snapping either. It's calling out protections. It's getting the offensive line organized. It's a multitude of things. And right now, I don't know who's going to be that guy. And I, I don't even know if the coaching staff knows that considering um, they didn't bring a center in, an experienced center that you say, okay, then we're going to plug this guy in. And then we're going to do work on the outer ends. 
So um, that's a huge concern. I feel better about the left side of the line than the right side because I feel like with BCD and Cade Bennett, I think you've got those positions set. Uh, but with right guard and right tackle, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen there either. So the concern level should be high going into spring camp for the offensive line. You know, I, I think that, that they definitely need to play better um, than they did. I, I, again, it, it's the same thing that Mike Goff told us. It's one thing to be able to play well for a number of snaps, but not having those huge errors, not having those huge mistakes. Um, and for most games that that showed up, that's interesting. I, I'm one thing I'm what, just curious about is they moved BCD Brandon Crenshaw Dixon. They moved him from right tackle to left tackle, but then ended the season with a left-handed quarterback. Right. And so I'm totally curious if they're going to move him back to be able to say, well, this is our QB's blind side, and and this is our 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 best tackle. So. I, I do think it I think it's I think it's interesting. I, I think that um you know that the staff was able to go through and and not bring in a transfer. The the flip side of it is is you know, I'm not sure that San Diego State's stature is such that they're gonna ever get somebody who has played. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Cade Bennett as a great example. I mean, he came in all Mountain West. I mean, I, th- I think you know you could make a great argument that that he was their best lineman last year. He, had he less, didn't play. He had less he than forty. Yeah, he didn't play. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't play at Oklahoma State. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that something that I'm also keeping an eye on is is trying to figure out what happens, like kind of the new norms. I, I think a lot of times, man, you, you're going to start seeing a lot of these younger players kind of get thrown into the fire. Because otherwise they're going to transfer. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you if you get if you get a young guy and you say, look, you could go to Michigan, but you're guaranteed to sit on the bench, or you can come and compete for a starting job. Well, some of those guys have to win. They have to win starting jobs. So when you go and you start sending out these messages to to these higher level recruits, like you get to play early at San Diego State, which hasn't always been the case. Because San Diego State has been about development and the idea is that, you know, their older guys can be as good as some of the, you know, power five and different things, four star, their higher recruits. And it kind of that experience can equal be an equalizer. So it'll, I, I'm interested about that because, I mean, that that's that's the other piece of that is, you know, if, if you're going to go and you're going to bring in a transfer um, let's from a power five school who's not, who hasn't played, like, why would that player be more attractive to the Aztec coaching staff, the Aztec fans, than, say, I don't know, Josh Simmons, who's actually played and who has experience and who did show improvement and who did go through all the things that he went through and showed a tremendous amount of, like, mental toughness to be able to not just completely fall apart when you know other people could have fallen apart um and so i I think that that from that perspective i think i can at least understand you know why maybe they didn't didn't bring somebody in because i just don't know why they would stand out so much more um but that said i completely agree with you i i think i'm probably they're probably i mean i'm a little bit more concerned about linebacker but I mean, just in the conversation, I can I can totally see it. But it just it's just an interesting thing, and I think it's a good time for these young guys to come in because it's one thing to, you know, sit there and learn from an older guy, and that's really important. But it can also be a really important experience to come in and to see like full on competition, to see what that really looks like, to taste it, to see how every rep has to matter. To see how you know you just go 110 all the time because you got to beat the person who's there next to you, um, who's going to take that next rep. And both of these guys, I think, at those positions that they're going to be going into, you know, th- they're going to see guys competing. They're going to see guys really, really going after it, going after chasing their dreams. And and I think that there's potential um, for them to be better for it. And you know, who knows? Maybe they get in the mix if they can show that they're um, 
season beyond you know what you would expect from some guy who's going to roll on the campus in June and July. Your point about why would a power five lineman come here? I I I, I agree with you that. I think their opportunity, especially at center, would have been to take a lower level group of five team, um, a school that had a starting center that played well, but that was on a bad team or maybe was on a team where it's going to be bad next year and they were transferring. And, you know, maybe F power five teams weren't looking at him, but team, a higher echelon group of five like San Diego State was appealing in that then, especially when they were losing their starting center from uh the past two years and I, I think that's where the disappointment came in is there were guys out there from group of five team centers that had played that were transferring and it didn't look like San Diego State they could have talked to them they could have made their pitches but it didn't it, you know they went elsewhere so um that's the last point on that but the one name I'm looking for in spring camp that didn't play last year is Drew as a party oh okay He's going to be a redshirt freshman. We all right. we two redshirt freshmen start last year. Um, I've heard some good things from, about him from people who have seen practices and been at practices. Um, we obviously talked to him last year before he came onto campus. So, he, you know, he's in that Juno Paracera pipeline, as we talked about last episode. <laughs> he's a guy I could potentially see as a right guard option if they feel like the people who played there uh, last year were, were, you know, needed improvement or competition. So he's another guy. Laka Kapoy is another guy from last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard too much on him. I haven't seen too much about him. Uh, but, you know, he came in highly recruited from, uh, in, from Hawaii. So maybe he can, he can uh, compete at one of those spots. So when you don't have solidified experienced starters who have played really, really well, you have that competition. And when people know that they really are fighting for a starting spot, it can hopefully bring out the best in multiple guys. So, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, just as we're, as we're talking about it, you know, Tommy Mirabella was billed as the heir apparent with uh, Alamo Lave coming back. He's going to have another year to be seasoned. And they really saw him. And he got really valuable playing time um, at right guard. And and so I I would expect that that he could get he could get that be there in that mix, um, but Ross Masuli, uh, he, you know he he was the third center. I mean he then he and so he, and he in practice to you know when we were sitting there and and Alamo was not in practice and they had those bad snaps and they're rotating different guys through, but but you know I just I think that there there are people man, you know Joey Wright. I mean it's it's like it's the it's kind of that go time. For some of these guys to really get into the mix and 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 see what can happen and really push these guys um, to be to be starters, the the thing about the line, I think that's interesting, is because it was not the strength of the team last year. When you start to try to think about where San Diego State's offense can be, just the improvement that should happen. Just because they're more experienced, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're more confident, yeah. whatever. Um, just right there and that alone, the offense, you know, should have um, a little bit of a leg up versus the the version that that, that we saw in twenty twenty two. So there you go, little 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 brief preview. Early signing period was December twenty first to twenty third. Obviously, the Aztec signed you know close to twenty people, you know, either through that period or transfer since then, right. The actual signing day is next week, February 1st. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I'm not aware of any high school or incoming freshman for the class that's committed that would be signing on that day. Maybe that someone will pop up over They're hunting. They're hunting. They're hunting, yeah. They're, yeah this, but I think what's going to be good is that on, February, on that signing day, we should have a chance to hear from Coach Hoke uh, with press conferences, and we didn't have a chance to talk to him during the early signing day because they're in Hawaii for the Hawaii bowl. Right. Uh, so in addition to talking to him about the signing class, it's also a lot of questions about spring camp and what, what they did or what they didn't do in terms of positions and things. And the one question I do have, this is a spring game going to be at Snapdragon stadium or are they going to keep that in at the practice uh, facility? I'm curious about that one. Cause I, I see 
pros and cons to both locations. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely think, I mean, that that's opening up another whole, whole can of worms, but I mean, I think yeah. the conversations about how Snapdragon is used once it's a known commodity versus, you know, opening up next year. And we were talking about uh, the passing camp, right. And, and being able to to have the passing camp the last day or whatever, the championship day or even whatever you do, it could be there or, or using it, using that as, and instead of, um, instead of the soccer field um, as the place where they host their individual skill camps or, you know, the, there, there's so many different possibilities about, you know, where, how Snapdragon fits into um, all of that. Uh, that's a great question. That's a great question. I, 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 I definitely know that uh, the winter conditioning, you know, that, that, that's started uh, with the start of school. And so it's 2023. See, 2023 is upon us. We were successful. Kudos to you, Andre, with reaching our goal of having like a full year of coverage. Right. And I, I can, I, I know that it's a level of coverage that, that has not existed in the city. And I'm excited to see, you know, what 2023 will bring us because there ain't no off season for us, brother. <laughs> that is a fact that is a fact thanks guys for listening that's gonna do it for us hope you guys enjoyed the interviews we've got definitely more coming on the way uh including some of some of uh the the coaches on staff so look out for that stay tuned and we'll talk to you guys next time you are listening to the sdsu football podcast presented by the east village times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison.